Hello, sports fans and football fans. Today, we're going to take kind of a deep dive look at some of the cards in the Stratomatic football set for the 2020 season, uh, which was completed last year with the Buccaneers defeating the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl. And if you haven't seen it, I've done a replay of that Super Bowl using the card and dice uh, basic version of the game. You might want to go check it out. Just, you know, I'll link to the game in the uh, description or on the end screen. The end screen will have the link to that video in the event that you want to go check it out. But today we're going to take a look at some of the cards because I did the card opening, the box opening, whatever you want to call it, the mystery box. And I did a video of that too. But I didn't really look at the cards very in depth. So we're going to do that today. And we're going to look at some of the anomalies, some of the things um, that I think are, are interesting and best. Uh, so let's start with uh, something. Let's start out a little, um, you know, not really getting into player controversy yet. Let's look at the uh, Tampa Bay Specialist uh, card. Now, here is the Tampa Bay Specialist card. Now, one thing I've noticed, and this was something that struck me in general about the set, um, with the 2020 set, I don't know when they changed this, but you can see on the kickoffs, it'll say like negative eight in the end zone, negative six in the end zone. Uh, that's a new thing. It's usually uh, before, like I have the 2009 set or 2008 set. It just says touchback um, or it says to the one yard line, whatever. But as you can see here, this will like give you, um, you know, some number of yards into the end zone and then let you decide whether you want to return it from that deep in the end zone or not, which is kind of cool. But what I wanted to point out with Tampa Bay's card is notice these gigantic returns uh, when you refer to their card. If you refer to their kickoff, see where it says, um, what does it say? Extra, wait, not extra points. It does. But under extra points where it says, um, you know, kickoff returns and punt returns, look at those. 12 on punt return is a long gain, and under uh, kickoff returns, they're all, what are they, all in the 50s? Yes, they're all in the 50s. So if you roll, if you kick off, um, or if Tampa Bay kicks off to you, and then you roll a 7, 8, or 12, you're going to get a gigantic return. And I looked at some of the other specialist cards, they're not like that. So Tampa Bay's kick return team must have been horrendous. I mean, I don't know because I don't follow the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Although I would think if if there are Tampa Bay fans, let me know if that's something that you noticed while you were watching the actual season. Because according to Stratomatic, yeah. Now, something else I wanted to point out is that the Tampa Bay defense is quite good. Um, and especially their run. Here, here they are against the run, and they're supreme. They are supreme against the run, and check that out. And of course, with any of these, if you want a little bit more time to look at the card, you can just uh, freeze the video. So, um, but yeah, look at those run totals. And then, of course, it carries over. They were good against the pass, um, I believe. Average. They were average against the pass. And, um, but you look at the end run, the end run, it carries over to that too, the Supreme, the being the Supreme. And they don't, Strat doesn't give out Supremes very often. I think the 85 Bears defense got that. I don't, and certainly I haven't gotten all of the sets through the history of the game. So, I don't know what other teams might have been Supreme against the run or the pass, but it's rare. Um, and it's especially, you would think it would be rare in today's game since you see such high scores. Like, scores in the 40s now are commonplace. But when I was a kid, you almost never saw a team score 40 points. 
So now I want to talk about, oh, and one other thing that caught my notice on defense, while we're on the uh, subject of defenses, here's the Jets' defense. Now, I'm going to tell you, it was rated against runs as good and against passes as average to good. So let's take a look at these cards, because what I thought was notable about this was that the Jets were terrible. And yet they had a good defense and an average to good defense. So I don't know how that works out. How do you reconcile that when you're trying to say, hey, this team only won like one game or two games or whatever it was that they won. And they got that high draft pick and uh, took Zach Wilson with it. Yet they had a pretty good defense, according to Strat. And... Uh, and also, let's see, who are we going to look at? Yeah, Sam. Now, here's Sam Darnold's card. Now, um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I'm going to show you some of the other quarterbacks' cards in the set. So, And you're going to see that the other quarterbacks' cards weren't as good as this one. But his flat pass is as good as any that you're going to see. And the short pass, I guess you could live with that short pass, although he only has, like, what I call the double gainer, which is, like, it's a gain whether you're right or wrong. He only has that on three things, so I don't know. You think you know, but you don't know, and you never will. But... You know, that, I mean, they seem to be saying, like, that Sam Darnold was the reason the Jets were bad. And that never struck me as being the situation while the Jets were playing. I thought it was at least equally the defense's fault. But apparently not. Now I want to compare, um, I want to compare quarterbacks. Now you just saw Darnold's card. Uh, and I want to kind of take a look at this because there's some kind of disparity here. Let's look at the statistics and the card for Tom Brady, for instance. Okay? So there's his card. Take a good look at that card. It's good. It is good. And it should be. I'm not saying that this card should not be good. But he completed 65.7% of his passes for 40 touchdowns and a 2% interception uh, rate. Now, of course, those are all very good. 40 touchdowns, that's crazy good. And only a 2% interception rate. Now, in comparison to Tom Brady, let me ask you this. How good was Mitch Trubisky? Okay, I'm going to give you a second to think about it. And we're going to look at Trubisky's card. There's Trubisky's card. Now, if you're noticing down at the bottom the statistics... Touchdown-wise, the statistics do not even come close to matching up. But what was his interception percentage? 2.7%. Brady's was 2. Now, I know that that's a little higher, but it's only a little higher. And Brady's completion percentage was 65.7. What was Trubisky's? 67. So, um, how does that card compare to Tom Brady's. Well, it doesn't compare favorably at all. Um, not really. The double gainers, the ones where you're right or wrong, they are, he's got two of them. He's got two if you don't count the must run as on the wrong, or on the uh, right, because I don't count must run, I'm counting just completions. He's got two Brady has one, two, three, four. And uh, the, now the must run, of course, for Mitch Trubisky, it's not that bad. He had a 5.9 rushing yard average. He can also do an end run. You can end run with Trubisky. And, uh, you know, those must runs, look at the must runs. Those aren't bad at all. My point is, really, it's kind of twofold. First of all, you should be able to, in Stratomatic football, not real life, 
probably wouldn't work in real life. But in Stratomatic football, you should be able to swap Trubisky for Brady and get similar results to what Brady got. Which team do you play for? If you used Trubisky um, the same way you would use Brady, except that uh, Trubisky would run a lot more. He would run out of the pocket when the other team was right. But also, his double long, Trubisky's double long gain is at three, whereas Brady's is, is at eight. Now, I understand Brady passed for 4,600 yards and Trubisky passed for 2,055 yards. But Brady also threw the ball 610 times and uh, Trubisky threw it a third of that. Well, you know, or no, half of that. Um, yeah, it's about half of that. So, but if you doubled, so if if you doubled Trubisky's yardage, he would have 4,055 yards. Brady had 4,633 yards. And the touchdowns are basically, I mean, that has a lot to do with receivers and situations. You know, it's kind of like RBIs for a batter with runners on base or not on base. You know, you can hit 40 home runs and have only 41 RBIs if nobody was on base when you hit them. So, you know, so it's it, that that's kind of situational. But yet you compare these cards and, uh, yeah, I can't really, it's hard to get them both in there. But you compare these cards and Trubisky's is noticeably worse, but the statistics, especially if you... Um, drew Trubisky out to the n number of reps that Tom Brady got, he really shouldn't be that much worse. So let's look at uh, Patrick Mahomes. Now, Patrick Mahomes has an awesome card. And again, I'm not saying Patrick Mahomes shouldn't have an awesome card. He had great receivers, and he is an excellent quarterback. He might be... The best quarterback right now in the NFL, like overall in history, he's not better than Tom Brady, at least not yet. But he might be the best right now. But even he had 66.4 completion percentage. Remember, Trubisky had 67. And by the way, while I'm telling you all this, and you're thinking of Mitch Trubisky, and you're thinking about how the Bears sat him after the third game of the season, what I'm thinking is why. But anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. So anyway, and he passed for 4,740 yards. Again, if you double Trubisky to get him to about where, because Mahomes had 587 passes, Trubisky had 297 passes. If you double Trubisky's numbers, you would get 4,055 yards to 4,740. Now I know that's, you know, less but is it that much less that the card again let me uh let me show um the main man mahomes and now let me show you trubisky again you see what i'm saying And Strat, you know, you can't, and let's not say that Strat doesn't project things, because they do make cards based on what a guy would do if he was projected out. Also, if you projected, um, remember, Brady had 40 touchdown passes. If you projected Trubisky out, doubled his stats, he would have had 32 touchdown passes to 40. Again, it's like Strat is saying... Yeah, if you doubled this guy's stats, he would be he would be Tom Brady. But you can't because he didn't, and he only played this many reps, and he only had this many passes, and he only had this many touchdown passes. So we're going to make the card based on that. But yet, you know, in the baseball game, if that's any indication, in the hockey game, they always make the card based on, you know, like if a guy only played 10 games and he had three goals, he's going to have a lot of goals on his card. I mean, it just makes sense. 
you know, that you don't give him a card that only reflects three goals for an 80-game season when he only played 10 games. So Strat does that all the time, but they don't seem to have done it with their quarterbacks. And, um, and so now I also want to take a look. Let's take a look at Kyler Murray. And now here's another example where you can even say I'm not getting salty because I'm not talking about Trubisky, but he had a 67. He completed over 67% of his passes, but yet the bone that they seem to be throwing Kyler Murray is that he does a lot of must runs. <clears throat> because again, on double, double completions on um, right or wrong on short pass, he has one, two. Three. He has three, and one of them's at two. So, remember, Brady had four, and one of them, maybe one of them was at two or three. But that's, you know, but he has a, a higher um, completion percentage. He had 3,971 yards. Now, see, now we are kind of comparing apples to apples because Kyler Murray did play all year. So he had, uh, Tom Brady had 4,633 yards, and he had 3,971. So he was a good 700 yards less than, um, than Brady, and 26 touchdowns, which was a lot less. But he still only had a 2.2 interception rate, and Brady had a 2. Um, so... You almost want to say that maybe this card is reflective, except that the completion percentage is still a problem because Brady completed 65.7% and he completed 67 point something. So they kind of augment that by saying, well, yeah, but he's going to must run. He's going to run out of the pocket and must run, you know, that type of thing. And again, to make a baseball comparison, it's kind of like a guy who has a high on base percentage. He gets on base for 40% of the time, a 400 on base percentage, but he hit 267. They'll augment that by having the card have a lot of walks on it, and he gets on a lot. So I don't know. I mean, you're comparing more apples to apples here with Kyler Murray and Tom Brady, and you are seeing that in about the same number of reps, he did do not as well. He didn't do as well. Um, again, the touchdowns, though, that's kind of a situational thing. What receivers do I have? Um, what defenses am I playing? How often were we in the red zone? It's, it's kind of situational. And again, his must run is kind of like with Mitch Trubisky. He is very good at running. He has a, a very good must run card, and he can end run as well. But again, just these kinds of things that I'm pointing out. And, you know, what conclusions are you guys drawing about these card comparisons? So another one I want to look at is um, uh, Kirk Cousins. Now, Kirk Cousins, what are you thinking in your mind when you're thinking Kirk Cousins? You think you know, but you don't know. And you never will. How good he is. Again, I'll give you a couple seconds. All right, so here he is, 67.6 completion rate, and he passed for 4,265 yards. Remember, Brady passed for 4,600, so it's about a 400-yard difference. But he passed for 35 touchdowns, Brady passed for 40, and he had a 2.5 interception rate, Brady had a 2. Um, now, this is, I will say, this is a lot closer to uh, Brady's card, um, it is. It looks like statistically, for the statistics and in a comparison with Brady's card, that it would be roughly correct. You like that? You like that? It, you know, so maybe they did do his card correctly, but still, isn't it funny that when you think of Kirk Cousins, you don't think he's that good? I have a friend who's a Vikings fan. And he says that Kirk Cousins has a ceiling, and that ceiling isn't all that high. He's not all that good. But yet, statistically, for what he actually did, 516 passes, 67.6 .6 completion rate, 4,265 yards, 35 touchdowns, and a 2.5 interception rate, 
He's basically Tom Brady. <laughs> oh, wait, you're serious. So, um, and again, we can give another look at, um, at Brady versus, um, Brady versus Cousins, kind of right there. So I think those are close. The, I think they did a pretty good job there. But it's just funny. And then, you know, you think about this, all of this, what it means. And it basically, it's <clears throat> that in Stratomatic, a lot of the quarterbacks are interchangeable. Would Kyler Murray do very well on the forty or on the uh, Buccaneers if you had the Buccaneers? Sure, he would. Um, and uh, in fact, I want to take a look at the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott because Dak Prescott was on a pace to pass for six thousand yards. So let's see what his card looks like. All right, so here's. Uh, Dak Prescott, and as you can see, it looks like they butchered his card. Say what? Because he passed 68%. He had a 68% completion rate. And like I said, he was on a pace to, to obliterate what Tom Brady did in 600 passes. He was on a pace to pass for 6,000 yards and... Let's see, 9 and 9 is 18, 18, it, like 36 touchdown passes. And he had a 1.8 interception rate. Better than Tom Brady's. But yet, look at this. It's really loaded with must runs. Now, Dak Prescott, yes, he can run. And he was very good at running. But they're not really, a. they're kind of, um, you know, again, they're cushioning that, um, that completion rate by saying, all right, but yeah, he'll must run though, if you guess right. But again, the double completions for him is only, it's only two. There's only two. And why is that? Because really this card, if you projected him out to an entire season, he would be better than Tom Brady. He would be, let me say that again. He would be better than Tom Brady. Say what? Not on touchdown passes, but again, that's kind of a situational thing. So I would be interested to hear what you guys think about that. Um, and some of the other things I pointed out, you know, we, we often criticize Strat for not evolving over time. Although it looks like with the football set, they did evolve a little bit. At least a little bit. I've heard people who play the advanced game say that they, the advanced game has had some minor improvements, changes. Whether they're improvements or not is the jury's still out on that, I suppose. And you can see, like, for instance, with the kickoffs going into the end zone and like eight yards into the end zone, six yards into the end zone, they have kind of evolved a little bit there. They don't just say those are touchbacks now. So uh, what do you guys think, especially I want to hear from the football, the Stratomatic football players, people who are actually out there playing the game, um, and see what you guys, what your opinions are, and how they compare to some of the things that I've noticed, like the interchangeability of quarterbacks. But enough about me. I hope this hasn't been boring for you. It's just that whenever I start to talk about Lane, I always get so carried away i lose all track of time and the fact that some of the quarterbacks that don't play didn't play as much of the season as a full year quarterback kind of get shafted a little bit you know i mean i kind of want to say that they you know trubisky and uh trubisky and dak should have had better cards compared to what their statistics were for how long they played or how many games that they played if you projected them out you know, they're both basically Tom Brady. You know, I'm going to say that because it, it's true, statistically, and on a straight projection. Now, I know you can't do a straight projection in things like this, but would be interested to know what you guys think. And I also wanted to give everybody a look at um, several cards from the set, point out several things. But that's going to be it for me. 
Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.